Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today, I will be discussing the topic of artifacts in Stalker Gamma. If you need any help after watching the video, come and join me while I'm live on Twitch. Link will be in the description. If you are enjoying my content, subscribing to the channel will be greatly appreciated. The first part of the video will discuss getting artifacts, then I'll talk about the artifact melter, and then I'll finish off by listing all the notable artifacts to look out for. There will be timestamps in the description if you wish to jump to a specific section. Firstly, how do you find artifacts? Artifacts can be found everywhere, but you are most likely to find them in anomalous fields. These fields are indicated by the text that pops up when you go near them, or by being circled on the map. Artifacts have a chance of spawning in these fields after an emission. However, it is a good idea to keep your eye out for anything glowing on the ground or taking out your detector every now and to check. Some people recommend that you should run around the zone with your detector out, but I advise against this as you won't be able to keep your primary weapon out while doing this, leaving you very vulnerable. There are four tiers of artifacts that I label as Junk or Perk Artifacts, Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 Artifacts. You can tell what tier an artifact is by the type of radiation that it emits. Junk or Perk Artifacts do not emit any radiation, making them safe to store in your inventory. You can also tell as these artifacts won't have specific buffs, but will have a perk which will be shown in the description. Tier 1 artifacts will emit beta particles, Tier 2 artifacts will emit beta particles and gamma rays, and Tier 3 artifacts will emit beta particles, gamma rays and neutrons. The tier also indicates the rarity of the artifacts, with higher tiers being rarer. High tier artifacts can only be found in northern areas of the zone. This is why I like to hunt for artifacts in Jupiter and Zaton a lot. It is northern enough for high tier artifacts and relatively safe compared to all other northern areas. The rarity also dictates what detector is required to reveal the artifacts. All artifacts apart from junk artifacts will be hidden until close enough with the correct detector equipped. The echo detector can detect up to tier 1 artifacts, the bear can detect up to tier 2, and the grizzly, velus and svarog can detect all artifacts. In my opinion, the grizzly isn't worth crafting. The only benefit of crafting it is it only requires advanced tools, where the velus and the svarog require expert tools. My issue is, if you craft the Grizzly, you can't then upgrade it into the Velus when you find expert tools. This means you have to find even more components. Once you find an artifact, it will have a condition. This condition will dictate the strength of its effects, with lower condition artifacts providing weaker effects. But how do you increase this condition? This is where the artifact melter comes in. Purchasable from either Sakharov and Yantar or Herman and Jupiter for 15,000 rubles, the artifact melter is essential for working with artifacts. The melter can do two things, empower artifacts or fuse artifacts. Empowering artifacts will combine two artifacts of the same type into one. The new condition will be a sum of the two artifacts used. This will use one charge of the smelter per use. The other option is to fuse artifacts. This will open up a crafting menu where you can use two to three artifacts to craft another artifact of a higher tier. On screen now is the artifacts required to craft the three main highest tier artifacts. To refill the charges of a melter, you can either just buy a new one or drag and drop the melter onto an artifact to melt that artifact and charge some of the melter. You'll get more charges if the artifact is higher tier. As just mentioned, there are three main high tier artifacts that you should try to go for. The Wallace Emerald is amazing for hunting more artifacts as it provides a lot of anomaly resistance. The full empty and the compass are good for resistance against bullets and mutants attacks. The compass has better resistances than the full empty but has negative psi resistance which makes your screen blurry if you don't pair it with another artifact which provides psi resistance. The other high tier artifact is the heart of the oasis which you can get from completing the puzzle in Jupiter. However, this artifact isn't too good, only providing a small health regen, stamina boost and bleeding control. The Death Lamp is a very rare artifact that will sell to ecologists for a lot of money if you find enough to get a full condition one. The Knot can be crafted in the Artifact Smelter and when equipped onto the bell will turn into the Lucifer. This is a very strong artifact providing 50% damage reduction, 35% increase in speed, faster health and psi regen and 50 extra kilograms of carry weight. There is a catch, this artifact will lose efficiency over time. If the efficiency of the artifact drops below 50%, then it will lose all of its powers. If it goes below 40%, you'll start losing health. If you don't increase the condition, you will eventually die. You can recharge the Lucifer by right clicking on any artifact and clicking sacrifice. Higher tier artifacts restore more efficiency, 
Charging it with the aforementioned death lamp will fully charge it and give a temporary boost to the stats. It has a chance to instantly kill you. Note that you cannot drop the Lucifer, so there is no going back. Some artifacts are quite bad on their own. When used multiple times, can be quite useful. One example of this is the ball artifact. On its own, it allows you to press the F key near small mutants like cats or dogs to kick it and instantly kill it. However, equipping five of these will allow you to one-shot any mutant. This includes Chimeras, presuming that you get close enough before they pounce on you. The other combo is five dragon eyes. On its own, a dragon eye gives a 5% chance for a stalker to explode when you shoot them. The chance increases as you use more dragon eyes, with five dragon eyes providing a 25% chance. Combine this with an SMG with a high fire rate, and you'll be deleting entire squads of monolith. Just be careful you don't stand too close. Some perk artifacts have a very powerful ability. Bats can be used to upgrade an artifact to the next tier, or to change a top tier artifact into another one. The Seraphim allows you to cheat death by granting immunity when a fatal blow is taken, and healing to 50% HP, but destroying the artifact. The medal has a 35% chance to apply incoming bullet damage onto your companions instead of you. The spike will increase your damage the more consecutive shots you hit, with headshots increasing damage more. However, when you miss a shot, you will take side damage proportional to the damage stack. The Phantom Star allows you to go invisible for 6 minutes, but you cannot draw your weapon or interact with anything. Finally, the beacon will make you teleport to the last person you kill. But make sure you don't shoot the crows when this artifact is equipped. So that was a quick rundown on the topic of artifacts. They can be extremely useful by providing massive resistances or perks if used correctly. If you have any further questions, feel free to join my livestream while I'm live or drop a comment down below. Link to my Twitch will be in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.